Absolutely. So sticking with the draft. Okay. Charlie Cassidy. Oh, yes. Let's do this. This is going to be fun. All right. Um, I don't want to get upset, right? Because this is one man's opinion. Okay. And Charlie Casterly has. Charlie like Casterly, yes. Charlie Casterly was an exec in the NFL for a long time. He won a Super Bowl with Washington. Yep. I think. And look, I'm not crapping on Charlie Cass. I like Charlie me neither. Cassidy. And that's what I was going to preface this by saying. It's just I'm I'm going to get upset, but I want to make sure that I don't disrespect someone who's done a lot a for lot. the game. Yeah. Right. So this isn't us crapping on Charlie Casterly because you know obviously he's forgotten more football than a lot of people will ever know. For so, sure. Um, but his mock draft, I mean, yeah, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot to be discussed there. So we can kind of dive right into it. All right. So first Trevor Lawrence, fine Two, mm-hmm. Zach Wilson. Fine. Don't think anybody has a problem with that. I think those are the consensus two picks in everybody's draft right now. Yep. And also, you know, I want to say this about Zach Wilson. Um, I got a chance for anybody out there who's looking for somebody who can break down quarterbacks really well. I watched a, I watched a video of JT O'Sullivan, um, his sixth, um, game. I think that he actually broke down from him. He's got some really good insight on Zach Wilson about missing reads and things like that. I would I would implore anybody who wants to just look to take a look at that. I mean, not that he's not calling him out. He's just calling it what it is. So, you know, he just he was just saying that, you know, for everything that everybody's saying about him being bulletproof, he's like, you would think that all these these things are happening every single time and they're not. I mean, he wasn't nitpicking or anything like that. He's gone through six games and he's been telling people like, hey, if you have other examples, show me. I want to learn or whatever. But I thought that was really interesting. So, yeah, Zach Wilson goes to. Three is where we're going to start getting upset. You already know who he has at three. Um, McCorkle. He, yes. Um, and look, listen to this, this response. Kyle Shanahan has enjoyed success with Kirk Cousins and Jimmy Garoppolo. I rated Jones higher than both those guys back when they were coming out of college. Lazy, lazy, lazy. Okay. Again, speculation on what you think Kyle Shanahan is looking for in a quarterback leads you to believe that because he loves Kirk Cousins and he loved what Kirk Cousins did as far as processing means that that's what he's looking for. It's lazy. You didn't get that from anybody. Nobody in the building is talking about Mac Jones right now. I don't understand this. I don't want to get too upset. But again, the narrative is being pushed by every single NFL media person at this point, and it still doesn't make any sense on the 17th. It really doesn't. It really does not. But let's move on. Atlanta, Kyle Pitts at four. You hate this. I do. And we've talked about it in the last show, so I don't want to repeat too much of anything. But, yeah, it would make absolutely no sense for the worst defense in football to take a tight end with the fourth overall pick. I think that Atlanta is going to move out of the four spot. And I don't think Charlie did trades in in his mock draft. So I guess that, you know, we can give him a mulligan on that. But, no, if if Atlanta stays put, I would be incredibly shocked. And I'd be, I don't want to say upset, but I'd be like, that's a stupid pick. As great as Kyle Pitts is, that's the the opposite of what they need right now. They need help on the defensive side of the ball. Right. And the way he describes it is the trade offers aren't good enough for Atlanta to pass on arguably the best player in the draft class. Fine. Whatever. Five, Pene Sewell. I like it. You know, I did my mock draft episode this week with uh, Jordan and Brad. And, you know, they kind of made a case for a wide receiver over Pene Sewell or, or an offensive tackle because Jonah Williams is coming back and everybody forgets that. You know, he didn't play one snap last year. And, you know, if it's something like Jamar Chase and you pair him up with with Burrow, his ability to get open doesn't uh, doesn't allow him to be back there for too long holding exactly. the ball. So, I mean, it's a good it's a good idea. But honestly, getting Panay Sewell is not a bad look, honestly, a five for them. That wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. Now, we all know that they need a left tackle to make sure that Joe Burrow doesn't get broken in half before his career really even gets started. We saw what he did right. with a horrible pocket. We might as well see what he can do with a clean pocket more more often. And, uh, you know, I think that's the overwhelming majority is that they're going to go with either Sewell or Rashawn Slater. They kind of have their pick there. So, you know, we'll right. see. And I've got, I'm going to do three in a row. And you tell me if any of these are a problem. Miami, okay. Jamar Chase, Detroit, Devontae Smith, Carolina, Rashawn Slater. Um, Let's see. Miami, Jamar Chase, Detroit, Devontae Smith. Yep. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense. Um, and We know that Miami needs a receiver uh, badly. So mm-hmm. Jamar Chase seems to be the best of the bunch. It makes sense to get him. Um, and then seven, we know that Detroit needs a receiver as well. Um, the thing with that is that Detroit needs so much help on the other side of the ball. Mm-hmm. And I know that fans would want to see a receiver go in the first round. But as I said earlier, you can wait and still get a phenomenal receiver. I think that Michael Parsons there would be a, an absolute great pick for them. He could be the quarterback of that defense right away. They're trying to build up a new era in Detroit. Michael Parsons can be their Navarro Bowman, their Patrick Willis. He can be there for a long time 
Uh, Is that because he, he went to Penn State? That's because he went to Penn State, yes. So um, he can be the next in line of great Penn State linebackers to anchor a defense for years to come. I think that if De- if Detroit's sitting there at seven, I think they really got to look at themselves and say, look, our defense is atrocious, especially our front seven. We need a guy that can come in and really anchor this thing. We can get, there is a trillion receivers in this draft class that have the potential to be impact impact players. They can take multiple receivers in the mid round. If they want to go a receiver, you know, second round, fourth round, or whatever they decide to do, they can do that because God knows that they need receivers. But if Michael Parsons is there at seven, which he more than likely will be, I think Detroit should pull the trigger on that. Yeah, I like that. Carolina at eight with Rashawn Slater. That makes a ton of sense. You got to get Sam Darnold his protection. And, and I love that you have weapons. Number nine, De- Denver, Micah Parsons. So do you notice who's not being called yet? Who? We're at nine. Trey Lance and Justin Fields are both on the board. <laughs> so Denver, Denver, right, in this in this mock, Denver, yeah. who is looking to move away from Drew Locke, has a chance to have Justin Fields or Trey Lance in this scenario, and they choose Micah Parsons. No. What it would like so what, again? Charlie Cassidy's done a lot for the game. What are you not seeing right now, bro? Like, what's going on here? This doesn't make any sense. Like, do you know team needs? This just came out two days ago. This isn't your mock from no, you know, months ago. What's going on? Like, I don't understand this part. Like, and and you're gonna see how far. They actually both fall, and it makes no sense. Absolutely. I would, like you said, what did you say? Where I'm not going to tell people if they don't know yet where Justin Field falls, but what did you say? I'll air fry a shirt and eat it. Yeah, it, no, it, it, yeah. And I was going to wait till we get to that pick. Yeah. To, to, I'll, I'll re, I'll re- yeah. I'll reiterate. Re- All right. Yeah, yeah, so very look. much so. So 10, Patrick Sertain. Uh, okay, for Dallas. I mean, I think Dallas, I think that's the worst kept secret is that Dallas is going to go defense. Absolute worst kept secret. Yeah, the defense was atrocious last year, and they need help in the secondary. I think that losing Byron Jones for them was a much bigger loss than we anticipated, and mm-hmm. their defense was bad. So, yeah, they need help at corner a lot. And you pair them with Trevon Diggs, that sounds good, honestly. And they're yeah. going to be running cover three. Dan Quinn's over there. I like it. That's a good pick. Uh, Quiddy Pay at 11 to the Giants. Jalen Waddle, uh, 12. And then Elijah Vera Tucker, 13 to the Chargers. You sighed. Which one did you sigh about? Quiddy Pay, man. Like, uh-huh. I- I've seen him – as high as like 10, I've seen him as low as not even making the first round. Like mm-hmm. there's so much like difference of opinion when it comes to Quiddy Pay. I'm not going to pretend that I know everything about Quiddy Pay because I don't. But the variance in terms of where people have been following, that's just kind of a little bit of a red flag to me. So I don't think that that's. Trying to think of what the Giants really need right now. Edge rusher, yeah. I mean, you can make the case they need an edge rusher. I would say they take another receiver, honestly. I mean, at, at that point, you know, you got Jalen Waddle on the board right there. I would take a receiver if I was them. You know, and I know you don't like the the idea of it, but, you know, hear me out. Remember, they have to evaluate Daniel Jones. Kenny Galladay's there. Darius Slayton's there. Now you get Waddle there. And let's just say Daniel Jones isn't your guy and you don't, you know, you move off of him. Well, whoever you bring in is going to have a nice bunch of weapons Mm -hmm. to you know to to be good with i don't know whether that's in the draft or whether they go and get somebody but you know remember you have to make sure that you evaluate daniel jones with a full full bevy of weapons and another year in the system because you have to pick up his option and and jobs are on the line here if 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 he hits this year and they're fine then get him and stays if not get him and goes and 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 i think that's where it is honestly so i mean i know you don't love the idea of a top 15 wide receiver but i think right there at 11 you kind of have to go receiver right there for them just to make sure that you insulate Daniel Jones with enough talent around him. The only thing with that is the fact that they already have, you know, a solid core. I mean, they just signed Kenny Galladay, Sterling Shepard's still there, Darius Slayton's still there, they signed John Ross. So, I mean, at this point, they would just be, it would almost be like oversaturation almost. Now, I get your point, definitely. Let's get Daniel Jones as much help as he can possibly get. And if he can't do anything with these guys, then yeah, we know he's not our guy. So that makes perfect sense to me. I totally mm-hmm. get that. Um, it's just in terms of... I mean, the Giants' defense was really good last year, so maybe they don't need to look so much defense. Maybe edge rusher, because I guess that is kind of a need. But Quiddy Pay, I don't, I don't think that he would be the pick. Jalen Waddle makes more sense to me than Quiddy Pay. I'll say that much. Yeah. So Jalen Waddle ends up at Philadelphia. Philadelphia's got receiver problems. Big you receiver know, problems. Jalen Jalen Rager didn't hit. They could have had somebody else. Uh, JJ Ortega, Whiteside. I'm not going to go through it because, yeah, I'm not going to go through it because Philly has whiffed on a lot of receivers, honestly, when they could have had other people. But Jalen Waddle seems safe right there at 12. 
Elijah Vera Tucker is somebody that a lot of variants, right? Makes it makes it in the first round high, doesn't make it, you know, depends. What is it about him, you know, that that has him so up and down? Because right here, the it's got the charges taking him at 13. Yeah, that's another just I mean, you just said it. A lot of variants on Elijah Vera Tucker. I like Elijah Vera Tucker. Um, mm-hmm. I think he'll go somewhere in the early twenties. Um, but I don't know, man. There's a lot of variance for a lot of these guys. I think that another guy that had a lot of variance last year was the Dolphins pick at tackle Austin Jackson. I mean, there's mm-hmm. another guy that kind of went back and forth on boards too. So um, we know that the Chargers need offensive line help, though. I mean, they didn't. I don't think that. I think they were the most like injury plagued in terms of offensive linemen last year. I don't think they had the same combination in any game. So that's a problem for a young quarterback, similar to Joe Burrow, just not to as severe an extent. To so I mean they've got to they got to really give him help on the offensive line. Mike Pouncey retired as well, so um, offensive line is a big concern for the Chargers right now. Yep. So we got our first trade at fourteen. Okay, so we did do trades. All right. So the Washington Football Team trades with Wash uh, with Washington with Minnesota to get Trey Lance at fourteen. I'm sorry, who traded up? Washington. You all Washington. I mean, here's the thing. That makes perfect sense. There's no way in how Trey Lance is going to make it to 14. No, Absolutely not. None. But here's his explanation. Washington trades up to get its quarterback of the future with Ryan, Fitzpat- Ryan Fitzpatrick already in place. Lance could be used in year one in packages that take advantage of his running ability. All right. Here's my problem with that statement. The running ability thing? Is that <gasps> is, 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 is this going to be another? They're going to are, are we going to see a lot of what uh what uh Baltimore did with Lamar Jackson year one before they replaced him with Jeff Fargo? But my thing is, is why is it always that? Trey Lance has running ability, but why is that the thing that you yell about, like, or you're you're pointing to? Oh, uh, get me quarterback. Yeah, don't get me started, dude. Don't get me started. That really, really gets me mad. Look and look where we're at. We're at fifteen right now. So mm-hmm. look, we're at fifteen, and the Patriots didn't have to trade up. Justin Fields is on the board, and they don't take him. Cam Newton is the quarterback right now. Who could you think of as a better mentor for any sort of team right now at this point than somebody who's already endorsed Justin Fields, like Cam Newton, because he used to go to his his camp. Yeah. But Charlie Cassidy has J.C. Horn going at 15. So J.C. Jackson, uh, he signed his his tender, right? Yeah, he did. But I don't care. That wouldn't... if Justin Fields is somehow by the grace of God or the grace of Satan, I guess, falls to New England, there's no way in hell Bill Belichick is not taking him. Especially if he doesn't have to trade up. Oh my God, that would be a that would be just the utmost middle finger to the NFL if somehow Justin Fields falls to 15 for New England, just right in his lap. And then Bill's just like, all right, yeah, I guess we're just going to start another down. All right, well, I guess we will have Justin Fields. Yeah, yeah, we'll we'll start Cam, yeah. We're we're on to Cincinnati. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, we we probably got the best quarterback in the draft. Yeah, yeah, we feel feel pretty good about it. (laughs) He's going to come in. He's going to come into camp like anybody else. You know, we don't really look at names on the back of jerseys, so we're just going to. Yeah, you know, that's it. He's got to come in and do his job. All right, but uh, (laughs) it doesn't make any sense at 15, right? All right, 16, Caleb. Caleb Farley, sixteen to Arizona. No, um, well, okay, you know what? I shouldn't scream. So no, they need. They yeah. still they got better in the secondary last year. It's still kind of a mediocre team. I would rather see them go offensive lineman though, because Kyler Murray still needs help on that side of the ball. So yeah, uh, I wouldn't argue too much with Caleb Farley to the Cardinals. Okay, that that makes sense. Okay, sorry, Charlie. Seven, nah, you're good. Seventeen Raiders, Tevin Jenkins. The Raiders are going to take somebody that no one's ever heard of. Right. Uh, that's what I've come to terms with because I've done it. Not not knowing that no one's ever heard of, but last year was a Damon Arnett in the first round when he had a third round grade. They took uh, Clellan Farrell at number four overall when he was expected to be a late first pick. So you now the Raiders, I, I have a hard time deciding what they're going to do because usually what we think they're going to do, they do the complete opposite of that. So watch them take a running back. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we got Kenyon Drake. We got Josh Jacobs. Uh, we're going to take Najee Harris. I would take Najee Harris. That's it. Yeah. yeah. Good God, that would make everybody upset. All right, uh, Miami takes Jalen Phillips. So Miami gets Miami. Kind of works, honestly. Yes. Yeah, you, you, so do you have reserves with Jalen Phillips? or I just don't think that that's one of their – for Miami right now, I mean, edge rusher, yeah, they should probably pick one up. I don't think in the first round. Right now what they need is as many weapons and protection to uh They need – I wouldn't – if I'm a Miami fan, I wouldn't be sad. I wouldn't be angry at all if they were to go receiver and then running back and then address offensive line 
cornerback. They've got a boatload of picks in the first 100. They can yeah. load up any position. Right now, the most important thing, everybody's complaining about Tua. He didn't have anybody to throw to last year because they were all hurt. Go, I mean, I get that they signed Will Fuller. Will Fuller just got hurt listening to his name being mentioned. So, wow. Uh, uh, look, <laughs> if he stays healthy, he's a solid deep threat. Devontae Parker, we know he's good. They need help. They need, I, if I'm Miami there and Travis Etienne or Najee Harris are still there, which they more than likely, likely will be, I think Travis Etienne would fit their offense more. I'm hoping that he doesn't because I want Travis Etienne to be a stealer more than I want anything. Mm-hmm. Um, so, look, if, I think that Travis Etienne would be the smarter pick there simply because they have a horrible running back room right now. They need they need somebody in that backfield that can attract attention. I like Preston Williams too. I just, you know, I hope that he just is able to stay healthy. I thought he was really good too. Um Christian Darasaw 19 to Minnesota as they trade back. Yeah, I mean, Darasaw I think I like Darasaw more than I like Elijah Vera Tucker, so the fact that he would go I think Darasaw 19. would probably go before Vera Tucker, but yeah, I mean, Minnesota needs some help at left tackle. They need help on defense too. Minnesota's just kind of Minnesota's a weird team. Yeah, they definitely need help on defense. That the, the reason. So everybody thinks that the reason that they didn't win is because of Kirk Cousins. Well, Kirk Cousins had one of his best years last year. And it Kirk was Cousins ball was anemic. Yep. Yep. All right, I'm gonna do three in a row. Ready? Okay. Yep. Twenty. The Bears take Greg Newsom. Twenty-one. Colts take Kadarius Tony. Twenty-two. Titans take Jalen Mayfield. Uh, I don't have a problem with the Bears one. The, you know, Kyle Fuller left. You want to make sure they need <laughs> the Bears. My goodness. Yeah. They, they cut Kyle Fuller for absolutely no reason. Absolutely one more thing. No reason. One more thing. Justin Fields is on the board and Chicago doesn't want to take him. They're going to take Greg Newsom. So Charlie thinks that in this situation that both – New England and Chicago, both teams in dire need of a franchise quarterback going forward, would look at Justin Fields and say, no. Nah. Yeah. Indianapolis, Kadarius Tony. I don't love that pick right there at 21. Honestly, I think that's a little high for him. That yeah, is a I lot mean, high for him. We just talked about all these other receivers, you know, and I think that they're a little bit better than him. But, you know, he may end up being one of the better receivers. But at 21, that's too, to- too high. Jalen Mayfield at 22. You know, I, I get the, you know, they, they're trying to fix the Isaiah Wilson pick. Yeah, what a uh, what a conundrum that's been. Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's get to these next ones. 23, Gregory Russo. I don't think anybody can argue that he's one of the most athletically gifted, but he kind of feels for me like Rashawn Gary. And I never was big on Rashawn Gary at all. Like, I never he hasn't done any- anything since he went to Green Bay. Is he still with Green Bay? Yeah, he is. And you've never heard his name. You know, no. that's that's, that's kind of how I feel about Russo. It's like, okay, you see it jump off the tape because sometimes the athleticism takes over, but I don't know if he can win consistently at this level. And that's really where my concern is. And that's what I thought about Rashawn Gary. And so far, I've been right about that, at least, because he just has been he, like, you had to ask if he was still on the Packers. That should tell yeah. you all you need to know. That's the that's a Jets pick, right? Again, yep. man, like, get him another tackle. Yeah. Like, my goodness, we can't – if the Jets take Zach Wilson, which we're pretty sure they're going to, the last thing that you need is for Sam Darnold 2.0 where – now, Zach Wilson can move. We've seen him do it. He can very much improv. The last thing that you want him to do, though, is be running for his life every play. Makai Beckton's fantastic. Get somebody on the other side of him. Now, if they want to wait and take one of these other guys that might be better suited at right tackle who have played left tackle in college, I can understand that. But I don't think edge rusher is much of their need. I think – I think they should go running back at that point. They're, I think they're in a, an extremely similar situation to Miami or Pittsburgh where they have they have dire needs at running back. They have needs other other places as well, but right now the running back room is so bad. Mm-hmm. Get Zach Wilson somebody who he can hand it off to and you know pitch it to, little short screens and whatnot that can make plays and not have him running for his life. I, I think that both Miami and the Jets could very much be in play for a running back at that spot. And then this is a deep offensive tackle class, so they can wait till the second round. Plus, they pick very early in the second round. So that's basically still another first round pick that they have. So I think that I I wouldn't hesitate on going Najee Harris or Travis Etienne if both of them are still there. If I'm okay. if I'm the Jets. Okay. Twenty four. The Pittsburgh Steelers select Justin Fields, quarterback, Ohio State University. Look, I would be the happiest son of a bitch alive. Of oh, course you would. 
I of would be, but I'm also realistic, and I know that if Justin Fields makes it to either 15 or 20, there's no way in hell they're both passing on him. There's no way. And like I said, I will find a shirt that I have. I will air fry it. I will eat it on this show if Justin Fields somehow falls to 24 and becomes a Steeler. If Justin Fields falls that far, I will eat a shirt. I will saute it. I will saute it with garlic pepper and onions. I will cut up, cut up some peppers. And I, just... I will eat a shirt because there is no way that that's happening. It's not going to happen, Jay. I, I, think that, happen. I think that you and I both know this, and I think that you and I have – we've both been very clear on where Justin Fields is going to go, and that is at number three. Yeah. There is no way on God's green earth or whatever God you pray to – that Justin Fields is gonna be at t- available at twenty four. He's not gonna be a stealer. This mu- so look, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. As much as I would like that, mate, it's not gonna happen. It's just not. This is so strange. Like this is, I'm just, I don't understand the thought process here. Right? Again, you know, Charlie Casterly knows a lot about football, probably more than me. Right? Right. But hey, how in God's name is he going to fall to 24? It's just impossible. It is impossible. I don't understand what the thought process is here. And it starts to make you think other things. And I don't want to be that guy. But what other explanation could you have for Justin Fields not only falling out of the top five, falling all the way to 24? You know who's going to fall to 24? Matt Jones. You, you, know think, Matt jo- you think Matt Jones is going to slip to 24? No, he won't slip to 24, but he's going to slide. Gonna... And, and it's going to be – it's not going to – everybody who has him as like a top five, top ten pick, don't be surprised if he falls out of the top ten. Oh, so let's take Mac Jones. I'm ending my fandom. No, no, don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> All right. So Jacksonville 25, Pat Friermuth from Penn State. Oh, Pat Friermuth. Oh, I Friermuth. love Pat Friermuth. Look, yeah. they, need, they need a tight end badly. They really do. Who, uh, uh, who are their t- – I think O'Shaughnessy is still their tight end. O'Shaughnessy and Oliver? Josh yeah, Allen. I think yeah. So yeah, they they are in dire need of a go-to tight end. Pat Fryermuth. Oh my goodness, we should start calling Penn State tight end you. I mean, Mike Asecki a few years ago. Pat yeah. Fryermuth now. So um, no, Pat Fryermuth. He's ginormous. He can get up and get the ball. Got great hands. More agile than the average tight end. I love Pat Fryermuth. I love him so much. He's, he's just got a tight end name, doesn't he? Pat Fryermuth. Right. Exactly. <laughs> so- that just. To me, Pat Fryermuth screams Green Bay Packer just because of his name. Uh-huh. Can you imagine Robert Tunyon and Pat Fryermuth at tight end for Green Bay? Pa- oh, I'm sorry. I'm going on a Pat Fryermuth rant, but no, oh, you're good. I love Pat Fryermuth. Excited. I, oh, I love Pat Fryermuth. Now, that's a solid pick for Jacksonville. All right, let's do three straight. Three straight. Cleveland Browns, and help me with this name. Jeremy Awusu Koromoa. Koromoa. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Jeremiah Owosu Koromoa from Notre Dame. Yeah. Yep. I mean, we've said it. I said it a little bit earlier. There's one need that maybe the, the Browns have, and it's linebacker. Uh, personally, I would like to see them get Nick Bolton from Missouri. I think that if you watch any of Nick Bolton's tape, he is, I don't want to make a Ray Lewis comp, but he's the biggest hitter that I've seen so far in this draft. He's an absolute thumper. Um, good in short pass coverage as well. So I think a guy like Nick Bolton, another guy that could kind of be under the radar, but he's going to make an impact. I would rather see them go with Nick Bolton in that spot. I know that everybody's high on uh, Jeremiah Wosukoromoa, but I'm a Nick Bolton guy in terms of my in terms of my preferences here. I like him a little bit more than I like uh, JOK. But either way, it would be a solid pick. Cleveland needs a linebacker. Okay. Baltimore Saints Packers next. So Baltimore takes Joe Ty- Tryon from Washington Edge. New Orleans takes Asante Samuel Jr., and the Packers take Zayvon Collins, a uh, linebacker from Tulsa. Um, I mean, yeah, we talked about Baltimore a little bit earlier. Their defensive front is kind of shot. They lose both. They lose Yannick Ngakwe and Matt Judon. Poor Baltimore. Um, and now they've got to kind of really figure out that edge rushing situation. I think Derek Wolf's still there. I could be wrong on that. Um, I think so, too. But even then, it's not like he's a premier edge rusher. Um, right. So, yeah, they need help in the front seven. Clay is Campbell up the middle, but he's like 97 years old, so he's not going to be around much longer. Um, so, yeah, they've uh, – Baltimore needs help in their front seven. They also need help at receiver. Don't be surprised if – I mean, if Rashad Bateman's still available there, why would they not take Rashad Bateman? I mean, maybe they, maybe because their quarterback probably couldn't hit Rashad Bateman. I'm sorry. I have Damn. to say it. I know. I know. I'm such a meanie. <laughs> it's okay. It's all right. But, uh, no, if Rashad Bateman's there, 
Bottom Rashad Bateman. Okay. Uh, the Saints, Asante Samuel Jr., that actually kind of makes sense. You know, Jenkins is gone. Marshawn Lattimore might be, you know, on on you know on his way out with free agency. So, so that's not a say, bad pick. They, he's still on his rookie deal, if I'm not mistaken. Mm-hmm. I don't know if they picked up his option yet. Mm-mm. Um, Zavin, uh, Zavin Collins from Tulsa, linebacker. He's got the Packers have been like, and the the Packers have been awful with their picks, man. Like, oh my goodness, that. last year was arguably the most pointless draft for a team in terms of Green yep. Bay. They did absolutely nothing. They could have thrown darts nothing. at the wall. They could have thrown darts at the wall and come up with a better draft uh, class than they did. You know, just with their their thinking minds, honestly. Like, it's like, how do you? It, it felt like when they went into the draft, how do you piss off Aaron Rodgers more? Like, well, I was that's like, the thing. We... That's the thing, mate. Because we've kind of seen Aaron Rodgers leave these little breadcrumbs of being frustrated. You know, he went on McAfee saying that you know he threw a wrench into some people's plans by his performance this year. What's that mean? Yeah, they wanted me to take a step back so they could put Jordan Love in at some point sooner. But you know, he won MVP, so that seems to not be happening. Maybe this is just a giant conspiracy where they want Aaron Rodgers to start sucking. That way, they can push the narrative that's Jordan Love's time. I don't know, but. I'm convinced that Aaron Rodgers is going to be the Pittsburgh Steelers quarterback in 2022. So I got to got to really stick to this whole thing. Maybe well, you maybe, just gotta hope. maybe Green Bay will help me out. And they're and trying to they're trying to make him they're trying to make him push his way out. Honestly, I think. I mean, yeah. it, what other explanation could he be? I think it's similar to the Brett Favre situation where they drafted Aaron Rodgers. They don't want to wait too long again for Jordan Love. They just kind of want to start a new regime there. And you know, they took Jordan Love in the first round. They traded up for Jordan Love in the first round for a reason. So I can't, man. I remember exactly how I reacted to that. I was like, oh, Green Bay trader. This could be fun. I mean, they're going to get a receiver. And then Jordan Love's name gets called, and we're just all like, mm. uh, so I don't know. We'll see, man. It's because it's it's the, sni- the 49ers sniped uh, Brandon Ayuk from them. Good yeah. God. And Brandon Ayuk got over there with them. Good. Thank God he didn't. So let's finish this roundup, and then we'll get to one more topic. Well, we'll get to the Minshew song, and oh, then let's uh, we'll get you out of here. Yep. Mm. So 30, Tyson Campbell, Georgia cornerback to the Bills. Tyson Campbell. <laughs> Yes. Uh, he, the explanation is the Chiefs exploited Bills cornerbacks in the AFC title game. Buffalo wastes zero time addressing this issue in the draft. No, I agree that it should be cornerback. I'm just trying to think of where Tyson Campbell falls into the equation because I haven't seen him in a lot of first round mocks at least. No. Nope. So nope. That's, that's a weird one to me. Last two, Kansas City Chiefs, Liam Eichenberg. Oh, Liam Eichenberg. Yeah. Eichenberg. From Notre Dame, and then 32, Najee Harris, Tampa Bay. <laughs> That'd be the most Tampa Bay thing in the world to get a 19th running back in their roster. But they have Geo, Fournette, and Ronald Jones. You're preaching to the choir there, mate. I mean, look, I'm not big on any of those guys, to be honest. They're all, I think they're all very good number two backs. Ronald Jones had a good year last year. I can't hit No, he did. Jones. Ronald Jones it's just, very it's good just when It's just that when Bruce Arians see his, sees him fumble or miss something, it's just like, you're out of here. Get his ass yeah. out of here. Yeah. That is it. <laughs> all right. 